Welcome to this Tutors U Sociology topic video looking at beliefs in society, focusing on types of religious organisation. In examining the different types of religious organisation, it's important to be able to define the different terms, churches, sects, denominations and cults, and differentiate between them. The first sociological typology of churches came from Max Weber, and it was quite a simplistic definition from somebody like Weber. He identified churches as being large organisations and sects as small ones. However, this is quite a limited explanation as it is based upon subjective interpretations of size and doesn't really categorise religious organisations based upon their functionality or characteristics of the organisation and their beliefs. Nowadays, sociologists use the typology of Ernst Trolch, which was more comprehensive in its analysis of churches and sects. Trolch defines churches based upon a number of characteristics, not merely the size of the congregation as Weber did. Churches look to claim a monopoly over the truth, as do sects. However, they differ on other matters. Churches are more closely connected to the state and often are endorsed by the state. For example, the Church of England has close connections to government, yet is removed from decision making. Churches have developed hierarchical and bureaucratic structures with different strata of authority from ministers through to higher level authorities. And churches are largely mainstream and conservative organisations, preserving the status quo and reinforcing traditional norms and values. In contrast, Trolch saw sects as being different in a number of ways. He argued that sects claim a monopoly over the truth and are often hostile to other religious organisations. Theirs is the one true faith, and others are misguided. They often depend upon charismatic leadership, and this comes through the form of ministers that engage with the congregation and interpret sacred texts and draw out meanings. Sects also demand total commitment from members. They are part of a community and demand service and obedience from their followers. Finally, they are hostile to the state and mainstream society, particularly the process of secularisation and social changes that make society more permissive. Niebuhr later added a third categorisation of religious organisation to Trolch. They suggested that denominations are not closely connected to the state and will comment and campaign on social issues. Their membership is larger than a sect, but smaller than an established church. There is some bureaucracy and hierarchy in denominations, but much less than in traditional churches. And they do not claim a monopoly over the truth, and are quite accepting of other denominations, churches and religions. And we can compare some of the examples from each of these religious organisations here. Examples of churches include the Roman Catholic Church and Islam. Denominations could be broken down into Methodists and Baptists, whereas sects, we could look, use the example of the Branch Davidians and the People's Temple. The other form of religious organisation that often gets confused with sects is cults. The term cult is often used to describe religious organisations that are misunderstood. Wallace suggests that cults differ from sects in that they are individualised, loosely organised, tolerant and make very few demands on their adherence. Cults do not claim to have found the truth, nor do they condemn those that are not part of their group. Rather than seeing these as sects, Wallace typified these as world-affirming new religious movements. It is often the case with typologies that reality never quite fits with the theory. Many religious organisations will have some elements of more than one type. Bruce questions whether Trolch's typology for church still applies to contemporary society, suggesting that in modern Western societies we have greater religious pluralism, meaning it's much harder for churches to claim a monopoly over the truth. Also, Church is not always a conservative force in contemporary society, often taking critical positions about government policies and campaigning for changes. 
Robertson, who points to increasing disagreements between established churches and governments, sees that as being partly a result of secularisation in society and governments being less concerned about the attitudes of churches. And finally, the growth of new religious movements means there is the potential for more than four types of religious organisation. Or these can be subcategorized even further, as we'll see in our next video on new religious movements. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on beliefs in society, focusing on types of religious organisation. Thanks for watching.